Hello everyone and welcome back for some more Drag Race gossip, secrets and drama. So with the new season of Drag Race about to come out, it reminded me of all the previous seasons and the crazy behind the scenes secrets that I've revealed on my channel over the years. So I've put together a compilation of the juiciest backstage tea because I know you all love it so much. So here are 29 shocking behind the scenes secrets from RuPaul's Drag Race. Hello everyone and welcome back for some more Drag Race drama, gossip and of course, secrets. So RuPaul's Drag Race graced our screens over a decade ago in 2009. And since then there has been plenty of drama and backstage crazy antics to keep us entertained. Some Drag Race secrets are quite closely guarded but some queens have revealed some backstage gossip over the years. So here are some shocking behind the scenes tea from RuPaul's Drag Race that you never knew about. Please note that a spoiler alert is in place for this video. Please just click that subscribe button and if you want ring the bell to get notified for my future videos. The Secret Party Stacey Lane Matthews competed on season 3 of Drag Race US. In an interview once, fellow season 3 drag sister Shangela revealed some tea about sneaking out to a club with Stacey during the filming of season 3. So according to Shangela, after Stacey's elimination, she was still in the hotel while the others were still filming and she found out that it was Stacey's birthday. So Shangela, because Stacey had never been to LA before, decided to take Stacey out for her birthday. I think it's quite well known that the contestants are not allowed to leave their hotel rooms so the production put duct tape on the doors to stop them from being able to open them without anyone hearing it open. So apparently they managed to get the duct tape off the door and sneak out and they had to go out to the street and use a payphone to call a taxi to get them to the club and apparently they had this amazing night out in LA and took Stacey out for her birthday. Shangela added that while they were out there was a problem because there were just no taxis near the club that they were and they had to end up walking for miles to try and find a taxi to take them back to the hotel before anyone realised. And apparently Stacey wasn't too happy about this because she had to walk for miles on her birthday in the LA heat but apparently she still had an amazing night and enjoyed her birthday. Shangela said they did eventually manage to get a taxi and they got back into the hotel and snuck in and none of the production ever found out about it. Almost banned from All Stars Alaska competed on Season 5 and All Stars 2 of Drag Race US. After the filming of All Stars 2, there was apparently a rumour that Alaska's ex-boyfriend had revealed some spoilers about All Stars 2. And Alaska eventually confirmed that the rumours were true. Apparently, Alaska had cheated on her ex-boyfriend, so as revenge, the ex-boyfriend published screenshots of messages that Alaska had sent him, which revealed the elimination order of the contestants from All Stars 2, before the actual show had been premiered. Alaska was apparently really worried that she was going to be banned from All Stars, but luckily the news about what happened didn't really spread much, so she kind of got away with it and wasn't punished. Alaska said, quote, it was brutal. The thing was, I really hurt him and I hurt his heart, so he wanted to hurt me and he was successful. Injuries on set. Peppermint competed on season nine of US Drag Race. Peppermint spilled some backstage tea in a YouTube video, but then that section of the video was sped up so you couldn't hear what she was saying. But if you slow down the video, you can actually hear it. Peppermint said that during the episode 2 cheerleading challenge, everyone got injured and some people got pretty badly injured. Apparently Peppermint sprained her ankle and so did Cynthia Lee Fontaine and Trinity Taylor and Charlie Hydes broke a rib and then Eureka also busted her leg, all within the same challenge. Peppermint also said that they had to push back filming because the queens hadn't had enough time to learn the entire choreography and the routine and also just so many of them were injured. Peppermint continued and said that Drag Race had never done a physical challenge like this before and she said that it was quote dangerous and too much. The unaired fight. We all know about the epic fight between the season 3 queens Shangela and Mimi Um First which has gone down in Drag Race history. 
As you know, during the fight, Mimi accused Shangela of having a quote, sugar daddy, and Shangela didn't take kindly to that. But what you may not know is that the fight was a bit more violent than what was actually shown on TV. According to fellow season three contestant Stacey Lane Matthews, who was there during the fight, Shangela and Mimi had a physical fight which resulted in injury, but the full fight wasn't aired in the final broadcast. Stacey said that if you watch it back, Mimi is actually wearing different hair on the main stage to cover up the quote big hole where she was bleeding where Shangela scratched her in the forehead. And here is a before and after of Untucked on the left versus the main stage. You can see the difference in the hair to cover the forehead. Stacey also implied that production had to shut down for three weeks after the fight while the producers were deciding how to deal with it and whether Shangela and Mimi should be disqualified, but this hasn't been confirmed. Another fellow season three queen, Mariah Paris Balenciaga, also confirmed that the fight between Shangela and Mimi was bigger than what was shown. Mariah said that the girls had been drinking those big bottles of vodka from set and so everyone was drunk. Apparently, the girls in Untucked were making so much noise during the fight that the people on the main stage had to pause filming and go and investigate what was happening in the Untucked room. And another fellow season three queen, Alexis Mateo, also confirmed that the fight was worse than what was shown. Alexis said, quote, To this day, World of Wonder have never had another incident like that one. Alexis also added, quote, I got the privilege to be in the World of Wonders offices the other day and talk to everyone and I was like, which one has been the worst moment for you guys? They were like, Shangela and Mimi hands down, there's never been anything like that. Alexis then also said, quote, I'm only going to say one thing, baby, Shangela, I don't F with her, she got power baby, that's all I gotta say baby, hallelujah girl. Skating Queen Tatiana competed on season two and All Stars 2 of Drag Race US. In an interview once, Tatiana shared a funny behind the scenes Drag Race moment from the filming of season two. Apparently during filming, Tatiana said that she really needed to go to the bathroom. But apparently the closest bathroom was across an empty lot that was used for a different show and they were told that they weren't supposed to use or go into that lot. But Tatiana said that she was really desperate so an assistant said okay and escorted Tatiana through the empty lot which was all dark because the lights were off. Tatiana said that while she was walking through the dark room she saw a quote floating tall figure coming towards her and it was RuPaul on roller skates. Tatiana said that she was surprised to find out that RuPaul likes to roller skate in his downtime even during filming. An actress, Tandy Newton, who is friends with RuPaul, has also said that she and Ru often go skating together on Sunday mornings in Hollywood. RuPaul even once showed off his skating skills at DragCon. Makeup Assistants Detox competed on season 5 and All Stars 2 of Drag Race US. And Jinx Monsoon also competed on season 5 of Drag Race US. During season 5, Jinx was a clear favourite, but was often criticised by the other contestants and the judges for being unpolished. Detox once said in an interview that during season 5, a producer came up to her during filming and asked if she would help Jinx with her makeup. Detox apparently said no, but did give Jinx a few quote pointers and also said that this is not RuPaul's school for girls. Detox then explained that she felt as though the producers were helping Jinx more than the other contestants and that they clearly wanted her to win, which was unfair. Hello everyone and welcome back for some more Drag Race gossip, secrets and drama. I know you all love the backstage tea and secrets, so I thought I would spill a bit more tea for you all. So here are some juicy RuPaul's Drag Race behind the scenes secrets. Please make sure you hit subscribe and ring the bell to be notified for my future videos. Air conditioning. As many of you can probably guess, getting in drag can be uncomfortable and it can also get very hot on set, especially under the stage lights. 
so it's probably no surprise that air conditioning in the studio at Drag Race is very important. In fact, Trixie and Katia once said on their YouTube show that it's the job of one of the producers to check the air temperature on the runway and they only turn the lights on when the temperature is low enough. However, not all the queens have been so lucky. Season 8 contestant Bob the Drag Queen once spilled some tea about the air conditioning on set. During Season 8, there were two sound stages that were used for filming, one for the workroom and the other was for the main stage. Bob said that while they were on set filming Season 8, the air conditioning would only work in one sound stage at a time. Bob also said that they would have the air conditioning on in the workroom while the queens were getting ready, but then the air conditioning would suddenly turn off and the queens would start to get hot. Bob claimed that the reason the air conditioning went off was because RuPaul had entered the sound stage for the main stage, and because RuPaul takes precedence, they would switch off the air conditioning for the queens in the workroom so that RuPaul could have the air conditioning on on the main stage. So Bob said you could always tell when RuPaul had arrived to set because the air conditioning in the workroom would suddenly turn off while the queens were getting ready. The Almost Drag Race Contestant Demi Sexton is a Chicago-based drag performer. It is rumoured that Demi Sexton was going to appear on season 13 of Drag Race, but then was disqualified shortly before filming due to allegations of sexual misconduct. It is alleged that Demi is a quote predator and has a history of sending unsolicited nude photos and also inappropriate behaviour with fans. There is even an Instagram account that has screenshots of alleged evidence of Demi's misconduct. However, just to make it clear, these are allegations and rumours and have not been proven in a court of law as far as I can tell. Adore's Mask Adore Delano competed on Season 6 of Drag Race US as well as All Stars 2. Adore was often labelled a fan favourite, however she was often critiqued by the judges for her style. In Episode 9, the runway category was Animal Kingdom Couture, and Adore said that she was a panther. Part of Adore's outfit included a jewelled mask that the judges were confused by and said didn't go with the outfit. However, what you may not know is that Adore revealed that during Season 6, she had to have two root canal operations. Adore explained that she wore this mask on the runway to hide the swelling. And if you watch the episode, you can hear that when Adore is talking to the judges on the main stage, it sounds like she's finding it difficult to speak, which might be because of the root canal operations. Crystal's Defamation Case Crystal is a Canadian slash British drag performer who appeared on season one of Drag Race UK. Crystal is currently suing actor Lawrence Fox for defamation after Lawrence called Crystal a quote, paedophile on social media. To give you some backstory, Lawrence Fox is a British actor who appeared on the TV detective series called Lewis. And in recent years, Lawrence has become more of a right-wing political activist and has made several controversial remarks about things such as racism and COVID-19 vaccinations, among others. In 2021, he also stood as a candidate for the Mayor of London, but he only gained 1.9% of the votes, which meant he lost the monetary deposit which you have to pay in order to run for mayor. In October of 2020, Lawrence said that he would boycott the British supermarket named Sainsbury's because Sainsbury's had stated during Black History Month that they would create, quote, safe spaces for black employees. Lawrence then claimed that Sainsbury's, quote, support racial segregation and discrimination. Although Sainsbury's later clarified that that was not what they meant and it was implied that Lawrence had taken their comments out of context. And this is where Crystal comes into it. Crystal, along with several other celebrities, criticised Lawrence's remarks, saying that they were racist. Lawrence then tweeted, calling Crystal and the others, quote, paedophiles, and he also said, quote, free speech, you throw meaningless and baseless insults at someone, you get a meaningless and baseless insult in return. 
In April 2021, Crystal and two other celebrities then sued Lawrence for defamation because he had called them paedophiles. Lawrence tried to counter sue, but his case was rejected, and Lawrence was forced to pay £36,000, which is over US$45,000, in legal fees to Crystal as well as two other celebrities, and the case is still ongoing. Cuckoo gets injured. Cynthia Lee Fontaine competed on season 8 and season 9 of Drag Race US. Cynthia is famous for referring to her butt as her quote cuckoo, and this word is now associated with Cynthia. During season 8, in episode 3, Cynthia and Robbie Turner both landed in the bottom and had to lip sync. It was an unprecedented lip sync because they were able to choose whether they wanted to wear rollerblades or not because that week's runway theme was quote roller girl realness. Robbie decided to keep her rollerblades on, but Cynthia chose to take them off. During the lip sync, Robbie accidentally broke one of the light bulbs on the stage and Cynthia cut her leg on the broken glass. Cynthia then had to have first aid because she was bleeding. And this is why Cynthia was wearing red tights at the beginning of the lip sync, but during the deliberation they were gone because she had to remove the tights so she could have first aid. The fight with Sharon. Scarlett Bobo competed on season one of Canada's Drag Race. Scarlett once spilled some tea during a viewing party at Roscoe's in Chicago when she was asked if she had ever had a bad experience with any other drag race queens. Scarlett said that she had a quote, really, really, really terrible experience with season four contestant Sharon Needles. Scarlett said that she was a fan of Sharon after season four because she and Sharon both have an alternative and quote, weird rock and roll style. Apparently the first time Scarlett met Sharon, it was great. However, Scarlett alleged that the second time she met Sharon, there was an altercation and Sharon quote, pushed my mum up against the wall. Scarlett then shared she quote, leaped at her, meaning Sharon, and Scarlett said, quote, I was so mad, and described it as, quote, the worst experience she's ever had with another drag queen. However, it's not clear from what Scarlett said whether she was referring to her biological mother or whether she was referring to her drag mother. Hello, everyone, and welcome back for some more Drag Race gossip, secrets, and drama. A while back I posted a video about some crazy backstage production secrets and you all seemed to like it, so I thought I'd give you some more of what you like. So here are 5 more production secrets from behind the scenes on RuPaul's Drag Race. Please note that a spoiler alert is in place for this video. Please make sure you hit subscribe and ring the bell to be notified for my future videos. Frankenstein footage. So, we all know that reality TV, despite the name, is quite often anything but reality, and this is, unsurprisingly, often the case with Drag Race. Several Drag Race contestants have claimed that the producers take certain parts of the footage they have and cut it together with footage from a completely separate moment in order to create the narrative that the producers want. In other words, creating their own version of events. Because of this mashing of lots of different parts together of the different footage, it's sometimes called Frankenstein editing because the Frankenstein monster was also made up of lots of different parts. An example of this can be seen in season 4 with Jeremy Carey, formerly known as Fifi O'Hara. In the episode 6 challenge, Float Your Boat, during the lip sync, Milan takes off her wig and then it cuts to Jeremy's confessional where Jeremy says, quote, that's clearly a dude. This was supposed to make it sound as though Jeremy was referring to Milan as a dude. However, we can tell by what Jeremy is wearing that this confessional came from another day. Earlier in the same episode, when Jeremy is talking about Jiggly Caliente's boat, Jeremy is wearing a totally different outfit. 
In fact, this exact same soundbite of Jeremy saying, quote, that's clearly a dude, was also used in episode 10, which was called Dads I'd Like to Frock, when the contestants had to make over fathers. In the episode, Jeremy is talking about his partner for the episode and commenting on how the father has a very masculine walk. So, it appears as though the producers took the soundbite from this episode and applied it to an earlier episode to make it look like Jeremy was calling Milan a dude, even though Jeremy wasn't talking about Milan when he said that. There's also a similar story that YouTuber Joseph Shepard talked about on his channel during an interview with Season 9 contestant Peppermint. Joseph said that he was in the audience for the season 9 finale and at one point they show a shot of him cheering in the audience just after Sasha Velour did her infamous rose petal reveal. However, Joseph said that actually he was cheering for Peppermint's reveal but in the edit they made it look like he was cheering for Sasha's reveal. Joseph went on to say that the Sasha Rose Petal reveal quote wasn't that big of a deal in the theatre because it was hard to see what was going on probably because the stage is far away and you only got to really see it properly when you watched it on TV. And this also lends itself to the theory that producers use footage in order to create different narratives to what actually happened. Fake Chocolate in season 14 of Drag Race US, they introduced something that they hadn't done before where they gave each contestant a chocolate bar and one of them was the golden chocolate bar which would save them from elimination. And at the end of each lip sync, the moment where the contestants open the chocolate bar to see if it's the golden one or not and then they say, quote, it's chocolate, went viral online. However, many people questioned whether production knew which queen had the golden chocolate bar and if they were manipulating the situation. And people also were sceptical because on the show it was made to look like the queens had the chocolate bar underneath their clothes while lip syncing, but if that were the case, the chocolate would most likely melt. During a viewing party at Roscoe's Tavern in Chicago, the queens who were there, which were Orion Story, Diabetti and Maddie Morphosis, were asked about this topic and Orion spilt some tea. One of the hosts asked, do you eat the chocolate? And Orion responded by saying, quote, it was plastic, it wasn't real chocolate. Maddie and Dyer then look very shocked that Orion had admitted to that and it's assumed by their reaction that it's because this was a production secret and Orion wasn't supposed to talk about it. Maddie then pulls out her phone and jokingly says, quote, Rue just texted me, you're in trouble. And then Orion made a joke about a sniper rifle dot appearing on her forehead. Outfits provided by production. As we all know, the contestants are sent a list of each runway category several weeks before filming so they can prepare the outfits to bring with them. However, there are some group challenges where it's unclear if the queens were told to bring the outfits or whether they were provided by production because often the outfits match so perfectly to each other and other times they don't. This question was actually addressed by season 8 contestant Nasha Lopez during a viewing party at Roscoe's. That week's guests at Roscoe's were season 14 contestants Kerry Colby and Deja Sky, and Nasha asked them whether they were provided outfits for the 60s girl group challenge. Nasha then went on to explain that on her season, quote, there was a rack and we got to pick our outfits. Kerry then explained that, quote, they had a selection of outfits and each outfit was pre-selected for the group. But this doesn't seem to be the case for every season. For example, on Drag Race UK Season 2, the Rue Revision Song Contest in Episode 5, the queens were separated into two groups and had to find costumes for themselves to wear out of their own wardrobes. And during the judges' critiques, the losing team was criticised for not having matching outfits, and Judge Graham Norton even said, quote, All your looks, even though there was a colour palette through it, it didn't gel as a group. So it does seem unfair in a way that some people are given outfits for the challenges and then on other seasons they're not given outfits and then they get judged on not having matching outfits. Lost footage. 
Art Simone competed on season 1 of Drag Race Down Under and was eliminated in episode 2 but then returned to the competition in episode 4. It was never explained why Art returned to the competition and there were many fan theories circulating on the internet. The issue was once again brought up in June 2022 when Art tweeted saying, quote, Oh my god, the NDAs for Drag Race Down Under expire in six days. I wonder if anyone has any questions. And she later posted a video of herself pulling lots of receipts out of a bag and the caption said, quote, I'm ready. She also implied there was some drama involving fellow competitor, etc, etc, when a fan tweeted to Art and asked, quote, I always wondered why episode 5 didn't have an untucked. And Art replied to this tweet saying, quote, at Glamourbug, which is etc, etc's Twitter handle, has some wonderful insights, dot, dot. But Art later seemingly backtracked on this and tweeted, quote, Oh my god, my bad, I'm so terrible at maths, it's actually 600 years, I'm so silly. Many people on Twitter asked if Art was going to explain the reason why she was mysteriously brought back to the competition in episode 4. However, it appears as though Art may have already explained this previously. In a now-deleted tweet from June 2021, Art said, quote, Now that's over, am I allowed to talk about how they lost the footage and we had to come back days later to film my elimination and then Coco Jumbo and I had to do that lip sync three times in a row. So it is speculated that production lost the footage of their elimination, so Art was brought back in order to refilm it, although no official explanation has ever been given. And this caused some controversy amongst fans who felt as though it was unfair to not invite back Coco Jumbo to the competition and some people even accused the production of favouring Art which is why they brought her back instead of Coco. Art also confirmed during a live appearance that it was her that sent the mysterious threatening letter to Coco Jumbo leaving it on her station and the letter said quote watch out. This is because Coco Jumbo was the one who eliminated Art in episode 2 by beating her in the lip sync. In the live appearance video, Art joked and said she quote, wrote it with her left hand so no one would know the letter was from her. The Lipstick Mystery Starting in All Stars 5, they began a tradition where the top queen of the week would lip sync against a mystery lip sync assassin. The assassin is always a drag race alum, and if they win the lip sync, they have to reveal which queen the other queens have voted to leave the competition. The assassins are always shown pulling the lipstick out of their outfits before they reveal it, and in Untucked, they also show the assassin arriving to studio and being handed the lip sync before going on stage. So, this always begs the question from fans as to whether the queens lip sync with the lipstick in their outfit or not, because if they did, there would be the risk that it would fall out, and it may also be uncomfortable to lip sync with a lipstick digging into your skin. Well, this question seems to have been answered by Season 5 and All Stars 2 contestant Roxy Andrews. During a viewing party, Roxy was asked whether the queens perform with the lipsticks or whether they get them back after, and Roxy replied, quote, we get them back. And this then answered the question that they do not in fact lip sync with the lipstick in their outfits, they get given it afterwards by production. Hello everyone and welcome back for some more Drag Race gossip, secrets and drama. We have a lot of backstage drama to talk about today, including Trixie Mattel and Kim Chi's Twitter feud, why Adore Delano really left All Stars 2, and Alyssa Edwards punched Trinity the Tuck in the face. All that and more coming up in today's video, so let's get started. Trixie Mattel and Kim Chi's Twitter feud. As many of you probably know, Trixie Mattel, who appeared on Season 7 and All Stars 3, is good friends with Season 8 contestant Kim Chi. Over the years, Trixie has said that Kim Chi got Trixie her first gig in Chicago, and Trixie used to sleep on Kim Chi's sofa after they did a gig together. The two of them have collabed several times, including on Trixie's YouTube channel. And their friendship came up on Season 8 of Drag Race during Untucked, where Trixie appeared and gave Kim a video message. 
And fellow season eight contestant Acid Betty made several rude comments about Trixie, including calling her makeup ugly. Kimchi defended Trixie, and this untucked moment led to the infamous moment during the season eight finale where Trixie Mattel confronted Acid Betty and said, quote, did you or did you not come for me in untucked? I'll take my answer in the parking lot. But the other day on Twitter, Trixie and Kimchi appeared to start feuding. It all started when Kimchi tweeted saying, quote, People do change after all. I am not surprised, just disappointed. I will reveal the truth to everyone soon. Karma is a B and so are you, at Trixie Mattel. And Trixie then tweeted back saying, quote, You love to play the victim while riding high on a moral horse, but everyone can see through you. You're not as sleek as you think. I have the receipts and you're the one that's going down from this, at Kim Chi Chic. And several other Drag Race contestants, such as Shea Coulee, responded to this. For example, Shea said, quote, Wait, this can't be what I think it's about, dot, dot, dot. I thought y'all kissed and made up. And Shay also said, quote, Can y'all please stop? There is a better way to do this. Trixie then tweeted saying, quote, Can someone make me a kimchi burn book? Do not trust her meme so I can post it as my own creation. Thank you. And this was followed up by this post that said, quote, At kimchi chic, I'm ready to let people know who you really are. Kimchi then tweeted a photo of Trixie Mattel saying, quote, I can't believe you've got everyone fooled for this long at Trixie Mattel. Once I reveal your truth, you will be done for. Start counting your days. And the two of them are reportedly not following each other anymore on social media. And this story even made news with several media outlets posting stories about it. However, this Twitter feud may not be real and a lot of people on Twitter think that this is fake and is just a publicity stunt. If you read the comments under their tweets, the majority of people seem to think this is a stunt and it's going to promote their new makeup line. For example, Drag Race contestant and judge Brooklyn Heights said, quote, Cool, so when does the collab drop? And another Twitter user said, quote, Nobody believes this is a real fight, lol. Stop it and just shove whatever item you're trying to sell us down our throats and let's keep it moving. So it does appear as though this feud might be fake and it might be a publicity stunt in order to promote a new line of makeup as both Trixie and Kimchi own their own lines of makeup and cosmetic products. It's not clear yet if this feud is fake or not, so we'll just have to watch this space and find out. Alaska versus Eve 6000. Please make sure you hit subscribe and ring the bell to be notified for my future videos. There appeared to be some drama between Season 5 and All Stars 2 contestant Alaska and Canada's Drag Race Season 2 contestant Eve 6000. It all started when someone tweeted at Eve 6000 saying that Alaska had used Eve in her show. Eve then responded to this tweet saying, quote, Not this and she still doesn't follow me, LMAO. I hate American queens. Eve 6000 also said, quote, It's just really hard being someone struggling to pay my rent to watch someone making probably 15 grand for the show use me for laughs. She then followed this up by saying, quote, I'll take that $10,000 via PayPal if you want to use my face and my voice in your act around the world, though. Eve 6000 also tweeted directly at Alaska and said, quote, You don't follow me. You've never tagged me, never commented, never liked anything I've posted, never shared my GoFundMe, never said a single thing to support me, but you think it's okay to use my image and voice as a joke for your show, dot dot dot. It's punching down at Alaska 5000. Just to give some background to this, on Canada's Drag Race Season 2, during the musical challenge, Eve 6000 played the character of Reveliana, who had multiple reveals, and she said, quote, I got a trick up my sleeve. And this moment went viral because Eve 6000's reveals didn't really work, and it ended up being unintentionally funny. Anyway, a video then surfaced of Alaska at a live performance where she addressed the situation. Alaska said that she had a reveal as part of her show, so she thought it would be cool to use Eve 6000's audio of I Got A Trick Up My Sleeve in her show. And this is what sparked Eve 6000's reaction. Later in the video at the live performance, Alaska asked for her phone on stage and said, quote, I'm going to follow her on Twitter right now. And after that, Alaska says, quote, here's the real tea. She, meaning Eve 6000, is transitioning and has a GoFundMe and I want all of us to go on there. I want to get her to her goal. 
and Alaska says she's going to buy lots of Eve 6000 merch. Alaska also reportedly made a $1,000 donation to Eve 6000's GoFundMe. Eve 6000 then seemingly apologised on Twitter, where she tweeted in a series of posts. She said, quote, Y'all, I'm a very sensitive person lately because of the whole drag race experience was literally heartbreaking for me and most of my cast has said the exact same thing. We didn't get much out of it, so I'm going to see things differently than most people would. If I were making money and booked and blessed, I would be happy to be referenced whenever. But it just hasn't been like that, so it's hard for me to watch very, very successful people use my moment in ways that I don't have the opportunity to. I still think my feelings were valid on the subject, but I do think my reaction was a little bit over the big top. And for that, I am sorry at Alaska5000. Thank you very much for your support to my GoFundMe and my merch. I will always be a fan. Why Adore Delano really left All Stars 2? Adore Delano, who originally appeared on season 6, was a fan favourite when she appeared on All Stars 2, and many people were very excited to see her on All Stars. However, as anyone who watched All Stars 2 will know, Adore voluntarily left the competition during episode 2, following an emotional conversation with RuPaul in the workroom. During the reunion episode at the end of the season, Adore was asked why she left the competition, and she said that she was, quote, embarrassed and that she shouldn't have done that. Adore said that one of the main reasons she left the show was because she didn't like being judged on her style of drag and she also felt that judge Michelle Visage had been overly harsh during her critiques on episode one. In fact, on the show, Adore and Michelle had a backstage conversation in which Adore confronted Michelle and Michelle apologised. However, that might not have been the only reason why Adore decided to leave All Stars 2. In a live video, which was posted during the airing of All Stars 2, Adore actually spilled some tea about what happened during All Stars 2. Adore explained that she was going through a period of, quote, really dark depression, and it was during that time that she was offered to take part in All Stars 2. She said that she was, quote, hesitant to take part because she knew she was going to be critiqued, and she also spent a lot of money on her outfits, but she ultimately decided to say yes. And Adore then went on to say that it was in fact the guest star in episode one, Raven Simone, that actually really got to her, not just Michelle. Adore said, quote, It wasn't all Michelle. The reason why I was super hypersensitive about the whole sitch was that I was getting it from everywhere. It wasn't just Michelle. It actually started with Raven Simone. Adore then went on to say that Raven said something that, quote, touched home and made me feel super sensitive and it made me super mad. Adore added, quote, The thing that hurt my feelings was Raven. She said something super gross. I've worked too hard to be talked to like a weird ass amateur by Raven Simone. Adore also once tweeted, saying, quote, I regret 80% of what comes out of my mouth at times, usually followed by a cringe shoulder gig, but one thing still remains true. Raven Simone was single handedly the most uncomfortable celeb to ever stand 20 feet from. And Adore has also made several other comments about Raven on Twitter. For example, in a Twitter feed where someone mentioned Raven, Adore said, quote, she's honestly gross. Quote, like, you guys, please trust me when I say I'm the easiest to chill with and Raven was honestly disgusting. And Adore also said, quote, she was so mean from the beginning. I smiled and she looked at me like, don't smile at royalty. F that. Make sure you check out my Patreon where I offer exclusive member benefits such as shout outs in my videos, chat community and sending one to one messages with me and also exclusive content. Check out patreon.com slash drag tea served or use the link in the bio to sign up. I hope to see you all there and welcome you to the drag tea served family. Alyssa Edwards punched Trinity the Tuck. So an unexpected piece of backstage tea came out during a viewing party at Roscoe's this week where Alyssa Edwards talked about a moment when she punched Trinity the Tuck in the face. At the viewing party, Alyssa was one of the guests along with Monet Exchange. One of the hosts, Batty Davis, asked, quote, what had happened on the Christmas tour and Trinity was there. Alyssa then said, quote, everyone is getting their phones out, messy, messy, messy. Monet then said, quote, this was Christmas 2019. I came on the tour, dot, dot, dot. And then Alyssa interrupted Monet and said, quote, girl, just call the bull beep out. I punched a lady in the effing mouth. 
Monet then continued and explained that she joined halfway through the Christmas tour and said someone said, quote, Alyssa and Trinity got into a fight. Monet said that Bob the Drag Queen also brought up the subject on their podcast recently. Alyssa then explained what happened and said, quote, I'm a teacher, a leader and a mentor and I do not condone violence. She explained that they were backstage and the queens were partaking in, quote, adult beverages and, quote, one thing led to another and I was like, girl, okay, it was fun, get off me, no triggers, no. And apparently Latrice Royale said, quote, sister, whoa, mesquite, B. And although Alyssa didn't actually state exactly what happened, it's implied as though there was some altercation between her and Trinity and she ended up hitting Trinity in the face. Alyssa then explained that when she and Trinity talked face to face, they both agreed that they were, quote, out of line and they made up and there was no need to call the authorities. They just got on with their drag shows. Alyssa finished by saying that it was a, quote, bonding moment and they just kikied about it. And just as background in case you're interested, I mentioned earlier that Bob had talked about this story on Sibling Rivalry. What happened was that Bob the Drag Queen said, quote, The only time I know of an actual confrontation was apparently, and I'm not breaking this news, was when Alyssa Edward punched Trinity. Bob then went on to say that Trinity talked about it on stage during the show, and every time Trinity and Alyssa would cross each other on stage, Trinity would joke and say, quote, Don't hit me again. Throughout the conversation, Monet was just smiling and it seemed as though she just didn't want to talk about it and she kind of denied that she knew anything about it. Bob tried to justify why he had brought up this story by saying that Trinity had already talked about it and this wasn't a secret, but Monet just didn't say anything back to that. This then caused Bob the Drag Queen to joke at Monet and call her a quote lying ass and quote the way you will save face is fake, you're a fake ass. Trinity herself also mentioned the subject on Twitter where she tweeted saying, quote, maybe I'll tell full T on the punch emoji one day. It wasn't exactly as described in that video. And then Trinity followed up by saying, quote, well, we are talking about Alyssa here. Rules don't apply to her. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another video. Like with some of my other videos, I am redoing some of my old videos in voiceover form rather than text only. And this does mean that the content of the video is the same as the original text only version, but this one has a voiceover. Please just click that subscribe button. And if you want, ring the bell to get notified for my future videos. Anyway, that's enough of that. Let's get on with the video. Since it started in 2009, the queens of RuPaul's Drag Race have given us some absolutely gag-worthy moments. But sometimes, as we know, what happens off camera can be sometimes just as crazy as what happens on camera. So here are eight shocking secrets from RuPaul's Drag Race that you never knew. Off script. Willem Belli appeared on season four and placed seventh. On season four, episode two, the queens had to split into different teams and perform a wrestling challenge called WTF. In that episode, the princess, who was on Willem's team, landed in the bottom. On her podcast, Willem talked about this and spilt some tea and said that in this episode, she actually wanted to lip sync instead of the princess because Willem felt as team captain, she was responsible for the princess's poor performance in the challenge. So Willem said on the main stage to RuPaul, I'd like to lip sync instead of the princess. And apparently RuPaul, without looking up, just said, you're going off script. And Willem just said, okay, and then walked to the back of the stage. This exchange between Willem and RuPaul wasn't aired and the princess lip synced that episode and did end up staying. Uh, but this revelation by Willem has led fans to question how much of the show is produced if RuPaul mentioned you're going off script. That would imply as though it is scripted. 
It's also kind of interesting and weird that they didn't show this exchange between Willem and RuPaul, because it would have been a really gag-worthy moment if Willem had lip-synced instead of someone else, because it would have brought more drama to the episode. The Mystery Note Mayhem Miller competed on season 10 and All Stars 5, placing 10th and 7th respectively. In an interview, Mayhem once spilt some backstage tea about a mystery note she had received while filming season 10. Apparently, Mayhem came back to her workstation after they had done the main stage portion, and there was a note on top of her makeup brushes that she said was written in, quote, sketchy handwriting. Apparently, the note said mean things like, your next B and boohoo, you're going to be crying later. Mayhem said that she asked if any of the other queens had written the note, but they all said no, and this has now led to rumours that perhaps a member of the production wrote the note to try and stir up some drama. To this day, we still don't know who wrote the note and why. Queen Bay cast off. Drag Race Holland premiered in 2020 and it's now had two seasons. In season one, the grand prize was a one of a kind dress rather than the usual prize money. Envy Peru, who won the season, was later pictured wearing the winning dress. After the show aired, there were rumours circulating that the dress had actually been made for Beyonce, but she didn't want the dress, so instead it was used by the network as a prize for Holland's Drag Race because basically Beyonce didn't want it. This rumour was confirmed by multiple people, but eventually Envy Peru, the winner, confirmed that this was indeed the case. Alaska's Meltdown Alaska appeared on Season 5 and All Stars 2, placing runner-up and winner respectively. In Episode 7 of All Stars 2, the queens had to give drag makeovers to their relatives. In that episode, Alaska gave her mother a makeover and landed in the bottom after a mediocre performance. Later in Untucked, Alaska had an epic meltdown that has since become iconic, and she offered the winner of the lip sync that week $10,000 to keep her in the competition because she says, I need to be here. Alaska later commented on this meltdown and explained that she had put herself under so much pressure in All Stars 2 because she was desperate to win. So the whole season, she had been careful not to say or do anything stupid because she didn't want to have a bad edit. But ultimately, this meant that she almost seemed a little boring in the eyes of the producers. Alaska has also said that a producer told her since after filming that without that meltdown, she wouldn't have won because up until then, she had almost been a bit too robotic in the competition and boring and it didn't make for good TV. And her meltdown was the first time that she sort of showed a bit of personality and that is ultimately what allowed her to win. Holland's Burning Rum appeared on season one of Holland's Drag Race and was the first queen to be eliminated. In an interview, Rum said that the light bulbs in the workroom were not the right kind of lights and they were incredibly hot, which isn't great for drag queens who obviously wear a lot of makeup and it was making them really sweaty all the time. Rum said that apparently after the mini challenge, she put her wet PVC dress down on the bench by the mirror and it caught fire because of the hot light bulbs which burnt through the PVC plastic. Apparently production had to come and put out the fire and Rum said that they didn't even refund her the cost of the dress even though the lights had burnt a hole through it. Drunk Dancing Jujib competed in season two, All Stars one and All Stars five, placing third, third and second respectively. 
We all know that during Untucked, the queens normally get given a drink or a cocktail. But what you might not know is that there is actually apparently a one drink limit per person and this is because of Jujubee. On season two, Jujubee landed in the bottom during episode six and lip synced while apparently drunk. According to sources, Jujubee had had too much to drink during Untucked and that led to her lip syncing drunk and then this is apparently why the show decided to create the one drink per person rule from then on. Homophobic Boss Michelle Visage has been a judge on RuPaul's Drag Race since season 3. She is a popular judge and is known for her no-nonsense style. Merle Ginsburg was a judge on season 1 and 2 before Michelle arrived. Michelle was once asked about this, why she didn't appear in seasons 1 and 2, and Michelle said that she was supposed to have been a judge from the start of the show, but she was under contract at CBS Radio, and her boss at the time wouldn't give her time off to go and film Drag Race. Michelle said in an interview that she realised her boss had said no because he was a homophobe and he, quote, didn't think it would be a good image for the radio station. Michelle said that her friend, actress Leah Remini, told her that she had to do season three and she convinced Michelle to go to the president of CBS Radio and go over her boss's head. Apparently the president of CBS gave her permission straight away and said that it was fine for her to go film Drag Race and Michelle's former boss, the homophobe, was later fired. The Hotel Letter Jiggly Caliente appeared on season 4 and All Stars 6, placing 8th and 12th respectively. Jiggly became a well-liked queen on the show thanks to her endearing personality and her vulnerability. It's been alleged that Jiggly received a checkout letter from the hotel that the queens stayed in on the morning before her elimination lip sync, which would imply as though the show had already told the hotel that Jiggly would be going before she even lip synced. Jiggly later broke down in an episode of Untucked and apparently mentioned the letter, but this was sort of edited out of the show and this caused even more suspicion. And this has led some people to question whether the show makes elimination decisions before the lip sync has even happened, which obviously would seem unfair if it is true. So there you have it. Did any of these backstage secrets surprise you? Do you know any other backstage Drag Race tea? If so, please comment below. And as usual, please don't forget to like, comment, and most importantly, subscribe, subscribe, please subscribe, because it really helps. Currently, only about 1% of people watching are actually subscribed, which makes me so sad. So please, please just click that subscribe button. And if you want, ring the bell to get notified for my future videos. Thank you very much for watching and I hope you will join me again for another video in the future. Thank you, bye!